All right, guys, welcome back to the Stevie Clark Experiment on Football Manager. This is episode three, and there is some bad news. Well, perhaps even some good news, depending on how you view it. Now, this was supposed to be the finale. It turns out we're going to have to extend this series to a five-part episode because there was a little bit of controversy. Yes, there was some trouble at Hamden. Somebody broke in, they tied up Steve Clark, put a blindfold on him, shoved him in the basement, and no, it wasn't a Celtic because they prefer them a lot younger than Steve Clark. Perhaps it was Alex McLeish, did he escape the mental home with his Alzheimer's and sneak in to try and get his job back? No, it wasn't him. It was the worst manager of all time, fucking Paul Lambert, as you can see. He is somehow the Scottish manager, now that makes sense because in episode one, Steve Clark, he got us off to a great start, he qualified us for the Euros. Episode 2, we'd went to shit, with two games at the Euros at Hamden, and we didn't even win them. Two fucking games, couldn't even beat Sweden and Norway. Bunch of shite clubs for the... somewhere in Europe, man, that shouldn't be beating us. So, uh, absolute joke, I don't know how it's happening, guys, I can only assume that because Steve Clark did a good job in qualifying, he got offered a better job and left the Scotland Post. And then, obviously, Scotland being fucked, had to get somebody in. And if I hired Paul Lambert, probably could have got a hobo off the streets of Glasgow. Like, it would have been better than Paul Lambert. But, unfortunately, we got Paul Lambert in there. You can see that, obviously, during that last episode, he, you know... <laughs> I, I would have rather not qualified for Euros <laughs> based on how bad we did, man. It was embarrassing. So, we're going to have to do it again, guys. We're going to have to start all over, man. Stevie Clark is going to go back into the hot seat, but this time I'm going to fucking go to Specsavers, and that way, if he does leave the Scotland Post, I'll be able to see it, and I'll be able to, you know, chuck him back in there. It'll be like a dictatorship, you know what I mean? Like the European Union. You want to leave Steve Clark? You're no leaving. Get stuck in there, man. You know what I mean? If Steve Clark wants... If he wants Scots it, he can get Scots it, but he's not going to get it until we're finished at this series, so, uh that is it guys, we're going to go back to the beginning, I know it's unfortunate, but fuck shit happens man, it really does, and unfortunately on my channel there is a lot of shit, but before we restart it, we're just going to see what, uh, what's what been happening, so we're going to see what Paul Lambert's actual record was as Scotland manager here, um, just for a bit of banter, if we can, if we can find that out, I've, I've actually no idea how we would do that, but uh, let me see here. There must be a way. There's got to be a way. How do you find? What's this, how do you find out their winning percentage? I've definitely seen this before. Is it milestones? So when was he hired? He was hired as Scotland. And it doesn't really say offered the Scotland manager role. Resigned as manager of Ipswich. Hired the Scotland manager. Uh, again, doesn't doesn't tell you his winning percentage record, which is kind of. Unfortunate. Hold on, can we? Staff history. Uh, managers. So, <gasps> Steve Clark didn't leave. He was sacked. What the fuck? How was he sacked? He had a 52% winning record. Why did they sack him? Was it like, ah, oh, we don't want Celtic fans anymore, Steve? You're getting sacked. I don't understand that. I mean, they sacked a guy that had a 52% winning record. And they've hired a guy, Paul Lambert, who has a 40% winning record. And in case you don't know, guys, 40% is lower than uh, 52. So, I don't understand that, man. Let's see what Steve Clark has done since he's been sacked. He is... He's not got a job. Well, that's kind of shit. Has he done nothing? Has he done absolute hee-haw? Yeah, I don't think he's bothered since he's... He, maybe he's just cried himself to sleep. Uh, sleep. Stevie Clark, he's turned the waterworks on and he's fucking drowned himself. Cry baby Clark at it again. All right, well, there you go, man. That was interesting. So, like I said, what we're going to do is we're just going to start it again. But I will keep an eye on, obviously, Steve Clark and that he doesn't leave. And in this episode, we will find out whether or not Steve Clark qualifies for the Euro 2020s. In episode 4, we will participate in Euro 2020s. That's if we are qualified for it. If not, then we'll just we'll see how the other teams got on, I guess. like It'll be like a normal uh, European competition for Scotland. And then in episode 5, the finale, we'll see 
if Steve Clark can qualify for the World Cup and if he can, we'll see how he performs. So let's go guys, let's get stuck in, let's restart this shit and no more fuck ups. Alright guys, so we are back, we've done it again, the experiment has been completed, at least for the first part. Let's find out how Steve Clark got on, you can see after the uh, Euro Nations and the European qualifiers, he's still in charge guys, so he's not left the club, he's not been sacked, he's not been abducted by any cunt running about Hamden, he's still there, so we're about to find out how he got on and will Scotland be in the 2020 Euros, let's go and see. Well, Jesus Christ man, look at that. <laughs> There's uh, no question here, man. No controversy, no nothing. It's a clean sweep for Stevie Clark. Israel and Albania stood absolute no chance, man. It was like some four-foot midget against Willie Wallace on the battlefield. He was always going to get torn in half, and that's exactly what's happened here. So we beat f Israel 3-1 in, uh, I don't know where we beat them, Jerusalem? I don't know, Jesus' bedroom. I don't know, but um, again, the Jews are not happy. 25,000 of them. Uh, and we may as well have sent them to the gas chambers because they're not having any success here tonight in Israel. And it's 3-1 uh, Scotland. Even though Callum Patterson got sent off, we still bounced back. So we're 1-0 down. Callum Patterson got sent off. So it was 1-0 Israel, 10 men Scotland, and then we come and do a great comeback. Matt Ritchie, John McGinn, and Stephen O'Donnell. Fantastic 3-1. Uh, we followed that up with a 1-0 win against Albania with Andy Robertson. And uh, then a 3-0 win against Switzerland at Hamden. Get brilliant. And then we beat Israel again 3-0 at Hamden. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, that's unbelievable. Poor Israel. Uh, Mexico we beat 3-2 at Hamden. Again, when our players sent off. And then Albania, we finished up the European League Division C Group 1 with another win. So, I'll have a quick look at what that table looks like. And there you see, man, it was never in any doubt. If you win all four games, you're obviously going to top the list. But, uh, yeah, so we topped the list. Nine goals for, two goals against. Albania came second. Israel came third. They're going to be eliminated. So, at least we're guaranteed a spot in the playoffs via the European International League, but let's see how we can get on in the actual European qualifiers. Alright, so we start the campaign with a 3-1 win against Bosnia. Good result, goals for McBurney, Armstrong and Lee Griffiths giving us the win. A solid three points on the board straight away, follow that up with a disappointing defeat to France. Griezmann, Kante, Mbappe doing the damage, Oliver McBurney with the uh, consolation. Up next, we beat Faroe Islands 7-0 at Hamden, a complete dominating result, man. McBurney with a hat-trick. Malta, then we went and beat them, away from home. Another man sent off, but that didn't stop us winning 3-0. And then, Jesus Christ, a 1-1 draw against Estonia at Hamden. That is not good, man, that is not good. At all. Lee Griffiths with the goal. Roman Magist leveling it up for the Estonians with 10 minutes remaining. We followed that up with a draw against Bosnia in Bosnia and Herkosvina. I mean, that's not a bad result, but considering we just drew against Estonia, Jesus Christ. It's two draws back to back, man. I think we're in real danger here of not finishing in the top two. We followed that up with a defeat to France. We were winning. Oliver McBurney seems to be on fire, he's scoring goals left, right, centre, but Oliver Giroud, the former Arsenal man, current Chelsea man, just underrated player, and he got two goals within three minutes to send us to another defeat, so we've lost to France twice in this campaign. We book up back to winning ways after three games without a win, we've defeated Faroe Islands, but that doesn't really mean much, everyone should be defeating Faroe Islands, let's be honest. And again, look man, we've followed it up with another draw against Estonia. That is two draws against Estonia. That is four points dropped against Estonia. Simply not good enough. And again, we were winning. Oliver McBurney, the guy that can't stop scoring, got the goal. But Roman McGeest, the guy that broke Scottish hearts in the last game against Estonia, equalised this time with 26 minutes remaining. 
And we finish off the group with a 4-1 win against Malta. So, I mean, there was convincing wins against the likes of Malta and Faroe Islands. But the the fact remains, against the, the top three seeded teams, not including ourselves, we've only got one win in six games. That is simply not good enough. Uh, one win against Bosnia, two defeats to France, another draw against Bosnia, and then two draws against Estonia. Is that going to be enough, guys, to get us into the Euros? I don't think so. I think those draws against Estonia are going to cost us big time. And they have. So there you see Bosnia and Herkosfina in the end. They did solid, man. They ended up finishing second with 22 points. They actually beat France, I think. We'll double check. So we finished 18th and we did drop 4 points. It goes on head to head. So had we have beat Estonia twice, we would have went. We would have finished the top 2. We would have finished above Bosnia and Herkosfina. But we didn't beat Estonia. That is the issue. Let's have a quick look here. Yeah, so you can see they lost to us. And then they went and beat France. So good result from them. And then they got a draw against us. And you can see Bosnia beat Estonia 3-0. And 4-0, so that is the difference, guys. Bosnia finished up with a 7-0 aggregate over Estonia. Our aggregate over Estonia over two games, 2-2. Two -two. Uh, just not good enough, guys, and that is why we haven't qualified via the European Championship qualifiers method. But we still have the Euro Nations League. We're in the playoffs. Let's find out how we got on in that. So, in the semi-final, we have defeated Albania by two goals to nil. I think you'd expect us to get past uh, Albania, but still, we got the job done. We've been known to slip up against the Diddy teams. On this occasion, that wasn't the case. Can we check and see how we got on? It was, obviously, it was a 2-0 win. It was all of McBurney and Lee Griffiths with the goals. Uh, 22 shots to their 6, 10 on target to their 2, 58% possession. We, we did seem to dominate that game. At Hamden, so at home against Albania, you would expect us to do it. And we did do it, so that means we're into the final against Serbia. It's Scotland, Serbia, winner gets a place at the European Championships. We'll see how Serbia got on against Hungary. We know they won 1 0, but yeah, look at that, convincingly beat Hungary, even though, the fa even though it was in Budapest, Hungary just couldn't stand a chance. Strange that Serbia so dominant. Uh, pretty much kind of similar to the game we had against um, Albania. So the two teams deserve to be in the final, undoubtedly, are Scotland Serbia. But will we be the winning team, guys? I really hope so, or else uh, <laughs> we're in trouble. Oh, and we, uh, fuck me, really? So uh, we're, we're not in the Euros, man. We're, we're out in the Euros. What the fuck happened? Serbia have beaten Scotland in extra time. I mean, look at those stats. I mean, we edged possession, but they doubled the amount of shots as, as we did. They doubled the amount of shots on target we did. I don't think there can be any complaints. It looks like they've deserved to win that game. Again, all of McBurney ever present scoring for us. But goals for Dusan Tadic and Lassar Markovic get Serbia the win. Uh, and it's, it's, it's tough to take, but... Um, fuck it. We're, we're, we're not qualifying for the Euros, man, so... Oh, that is, that's a bummer. That's an absolute bummer. I'm looking at the Scotland team here. I think that's a pretty strong team. I don't think we can really make any excuses here. I just think on, on the day, the better teams won, and that team was Serbia, guys. So, interesting. Um, That sucks, because first time around they qualified, and then this time he hasn't, you know. It's a bit of a fucking bummer. Um, Let's see what Steve Clark's... He's actually doing better than he was. If you consider, like, you know, in the first attempt before he got sacked, he got sacked with a win percentage record of 52%. This time it's up at 66%. So he did a lot better in the Euro Nations League. He won all four games, whereas last time he kind of struggled just to get top of the group. But at the same time, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you top the group by a mile or if you just top the group. If you do not win in the playoffs... It's all irrelevant, and unfortunately, that's what's happened here. So, that's disappointing. But, I mean, he's still done a good job. 66% winning record. 12 games won. 3 drawn. 3 lost. 
Uh, it's not the end of the series. I mean, like I say, we're, st- we're going to extend it to a five parter, but uh, five episodes. But fuck me, it's disappointing the fact that he qualified first time around, and then he didn't qualify this time around. But it's down to those two draws against Estonia. You can't drop four points against Estonia and expect to qualify. That's kind of why I don't think we'll qualify in real life, even though Steve Clark's coming in, and I believe that he could get us to finish top two. I think over a qualifying campaign, we could finish above Russia, but the fact is, he's already three points down. He's three points down against Kazakhstan because we lost to them. Russia will not lose to Kazakhstan, so you're going to need to make up those three points against the bigger teams, against Belgium and Russia, and it's going to be a lot harder, so again, Steve Clark, I'll confirm, he's not qualified for the Euros, basically because of those two draws against Estonia, but I don't think this has been a failure of a season for him. I think they will keep him, you know, they're not going to sack a manager with a 66% winning record. And we'll just regroup. Episode 4 will be, you know, it'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll have a wee look at the Euros, we'll cover who won the Euros, and then episode 4 will be the World Cup qualifying format, and we'll see if Steve Clark can get us into the World Cup. I'm sure we're bound to have went up the, uh, we'll check if we went up the, the rankings, but when we're absolutely bound to have uh, let me just see here. World rankings have to. So here we go. Up we were. We were 40th. For some reason we went all the way up to 33rd. Um, 36th. Back down. We went down to 43. And now we're currently 40. Interesting. Is there any way to find out what we were when Steve Clark first took over? Because I'm willing to bet that we were a lot lower than that. But it doesn't appear to... doesn't appear to tell you which is not it's not a massive deal if it doesn't but it would have been cool to have known but there you see he took us up to 30 he had, he had us at a career best well in this game anyway 32 and then back down to 38 so I mean it's not the end of the world guys we'll move on episode 4 we'll see if we can qualify for the World Cup but it is a wee bit disappointing I'll make sure that Steve Clark's still in the Scotland job that no one steals it for him and that Paul Lambert stays at the fucking job centre where he belongs. Anyway, guys, till next time, thanks for watching. Peace.